Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. Which cheap and mass produced item is stupendously well engineered? The humble corrugated cardboard box. It's lightweight, strong, splash resistant, somewhat padded, doesn't break down in heat forward slash cold, scratch resistant, recyclable, biodegradable and able to be assembled cheaply into any size. The basic design has existed for over 150 years. The retail shipping industry runs on cardboard boxes. The Corrugated Fiber Board Association of America would like to remind you that it's the humble corrugated fiber board box you're referring to. A cardboard box is what your shoes come in. Edit typo, phone. My son is a box. Damn you. A box. And their factories are way more interesting than the slide factory or the toy factory. When can we see a finished box? The zipper. It's a very cheap mechanism that secures objects in a very neat fashion. No wonder it's used in most objects that need to be opened and closed such as luggage and jackets. This one is one underrated invention. The original manufacturer YKK keeps such a secret around the process that they even build themselves the production equipment. Sewing person here adding, not all zippers are created equal. There is a big difference in quality. Those zippers in the top of a purse or a great jacket that just move smoothly like butter, yep, great quality. The cheap ones are the ones that will drive you nuts and get stuck. I always get the best quality for what I'm making. Huge difference. And those top quality zippers are also a lot more expensive, like $5 minus 7 forward slash each. V's very roughly, a cheaper zipper can go for like 50 cents minus 2.50 forward slash EA. Added fun fact that includes zippers, often, the most expensive part of a handbag is the hardware and this includes all the zippers. Edit, see you forward slash SGT Kashim's comment below on replacing his diving wetsuit YKK zipper nearing $200. YKK is not the original zipper manufacturer. The company was formed in 1934 in Higashi Ihobasi, Tokyo and only started making decent zippers in 1950 after importing machinery from the USA. Zippers had been invented and patented as far back as 1851, and manufactured in the States since 1893 by the Universal Fastener Company, with the more recognizably modern zipper coming in 1909. The term zipper was coined by the B.F. Goodrich Company in 1923 to describe the fastener on the galoshes the company made. Talon Zipper, the descendant of the Universal Fastener Company, would be considered the original manufacturer of zippers. Though they only have about 7% of the world zipper market these days, they had approximately 70% of the market in the 1960s. YKK controls about 45% of the market these days and is the undisputed leader in zipper manufacturing. Not exactly cheap, but I'm impressed that I can have a ceiling fan run on high for 15 years straight and not have it explode on me. I seriously startled myself when I realized the only time my ceiling fan had been off since I moved in was when the power went out. You should turn it off to clean it once in a while. It gets sticky dust on it. Toilets. They use nothing more than gravity to reliably flush. Doesn't use power at all. And if you've ever used a poorly engineered toilet, you really learn to appreciate the well-engineered ones. Edit, never would have expected my most upvoted comment on Reddit to be about toilets. Worst kind of shitters are the ones that get skid marks 100% of the time no matter how or where you lower the turd. The lighter. Spontaneously ignite fire basically whenever you want. Specifically, big lighters are incredibly reliable. You can find one on the ground that's been outside for months and they still work. Cheaper disposables break in a million ways and more expensive refillable lighters will leave you disappointed if you store them but you can always keep a big handy and know it'll work when you need it. I have a women's model Zippo that my grandfather got my grandmother sometime around the Korean War. Has gone through hell and back, including being underwater and then under sludge for about two weeks straight thanks to Hurricane Agnes in 1972. I have yet to have it fail on me. The transistor. I remember how amazed we were in 1985 to see a chip with 68,000 transistors. Now they're at 68 billion. My favorite part was in school my professor talking about how they used to do the layouts on transparencies by hand. Or how during Apollo the guidance aspect of the program was buying up a significant portion of the national production capacity of transistors. This sentence from Wikipedia blows my mind every time I think about it. 
MOSFETs are the most numerously produced artificial objects ever with more than 13 sextillion manufactured by 2018. We have made more than 1 trillion, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000 of them. For comparison, there's over a thousand for each grain of sand on earth. For comparison, there's over a thousand for each grain of sand on earth. All that sand is in flip-flops. Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. MOSFET. Just the average CPU in a modem day desktop computer at home has multiple billions of MOSFETs. LEDs. Cheap diodes. Even colors. Okay, I dislike the blue ones but tint them and you get warm white. Blue LEDs are a Nobel Prize winning invention for how revolutionary they have been in lighting. Gallium nitride is making waves again for being super efficient. You'll see plenty of tiny USB chargers that produce almost no heat. It is also resistant to high heat areas like engine bays. Ball bearings. Even the cheapest ball bearings with the loosest tolerances are still made in the 10 to 50 micron range of tolerance. It only gets better from there. Abex spec anyways. It's all ball bearings these days. Absolutely. I deal with them all day, in an industrial capacity, the difference between an SKF bearing and a no brand eBay special is. A lot. Most expensive one I've personally installed was like $25,000. Balls gave way to stuff like needle, roller, and spherical bearings as well which are also neat in themselves. The ballpoint pen, clearly. Give credit to the inventor, Laszlo Biro. He escaped the Nazis, invented the pen, then got ripped off and never made money. So that's the reason why it is called Biro in English. Didn't it take China years to figure out the technology to replicate it? If that's not the definition of stupendously engineered I don't know what is. They actually only recently figured out how to make the tips. Before that all the tips were made in Japan and imported to China where they were attached to the rest of the pen. <laughs> Toilets. I've been a plumber 20 years and very little has changed, or needed to. Minimal upkeep, cheap and easy repair, very long life. Hey so what is the difference between my house toilet that just flushes like regular and a commercial toilet in like a doctor's building where if you flush it it will also suck the clothing right off you. Is there a pressure regulator behind the toilet or something? Do this is a fun one. In your home toilet you have a tank filled with water, and when you flush it allows the water to dump into the bowl and flood it causing it to siphon out. Commercial toilets have either a manual or powered valve that allows full water pressure to blast into the bowl for a set time. It all but ensures it'll flush since anything in the bowl is blended, but it's a more expensive design. The aluminium beverage can. To expand upon this, Gies wanted to sell their beer in cans but didn't want to sacrifice the iconic head on their beer. Their solution was a device called a widget. It's a small sphere filled with nitrogen with a tiny hole in it. Under pressure the nitrogen stays inside the ball. When the can is opened and the pressure drops the nitrogen escapes, agitates the beer, and creates just the right amount of head. I wish I got just the right amount of head. Serious upgrade when they engineered the pop top to remain with the can. I remember with the zip-top cans, a lot of people would put the sharp metal zip piece back into the full can. Some people accidentally swallowed those and needed to be rushed to the earth. Batteries are marvels of engineering packed tightly into a minuscule canister, even AA batteries are incredibly sophisticated internally. I saw a video of someone take apart a lithium a battery the other day and it looks like cotton balls and folded foil just all jammed together. Like someone figured out how to harness so much energy into that thing. Edit, this is my most popular comment. It's me admitting that I can barely tie my shoes, and here are people just casually throwing atoms together to make my car go zoom. I saw the same video, it just looked like two sheets of different material wrapped into a spiral and shoved into a tiny cylinder. To a layman, it looks so simple in terms of the physical parts, but I'm sure there's a lot more going on there. Glass bottles. Let's melt this rock into a clear, brittle material and turn it into what? Windows. Decorations. Screens. No, we're making pressure vessels, baby. The gods must be crazy. Metal pencil sharpeners, the manual kind, not electric. Don't buy the plastic ones in the school supply section. Go to the art section. Those metal sharpeners are choice.
I have a black wig two stage sharpener, I could do surgery with a pencil sharpened with it. Please don't. Screws, can you imagine what would happen if all the screws suddenly disappeared from world? Everything would fall apart. We would be screwed. Tool puns, everyone, you know the drill. Road reflectors countless lives saved. Similarly, rumble strips. On the shoulders and in the center. I'm sure they've saved my dad's life many times over. Without them blind people wouldn't be able to drive. Fun story about those. The inventor, an English bloke named Percy Shaw, alleges to have been inspired when driving home from the pub one night. His headlights reflected off a cat's eyes, causing him to correct his course and stay on the road. After patenting his invention, he would still visit the same pub. Only then, he never needed to use his invention because he could now afford a driver. He would see his reflectors as a passenger in the back seat of his rolls. <laughs>